In this video we will show you how to report MRI findings in rectal cancer. And we will use a structured reporting list as described in the radiology assistant. Open the website, click on rectal cancer and just scroll down to the structured report. First we start with location of the tumor on sagittal images. The rectum starts at the sigmoid takeoff and it ends at the anorectal junction, which is down here. So let's get started. Here we have the anorectal junction. Now this tumor extends below the anorectal junction into the upper part of the anal canal. And here we can measure the length of the tumor, which is approximately 8 centimeters. The tumor involves the mid-rectum, the lower rectum and the anal canal. There are several suspicious lymph nodes because they are heterogeneous and irregular and they are located in the mesorectal fat. Mesorectal lymph nodes are suspicious when they have malignant characteristics, for instance when they have an indistinct border, or when they are heterogeneous, or when they are round. When they have these three malignant characteristics, even nodes smaller than 5 mm are suspicious. Nodes between 5 and 9 mm only need two malignant characteristics, and lymph nodes larger than 9 mm and even Mucinous lymph nodes are always suspicious. These nodes extend up towards the high mesorectum at the level of the superior rectal artery and vein, which is all the way up here. And this is important information for surgery or irradiation. Let's continue with the sagittals. The tumor is situated just below the level of the anterior peritoneal reflection, which we can see here on this illustration. And this is a very important landmark, because tumors below the peritoneal reflection can only extend into the mesorectal fascia, while tumors at this level or above it can extend into the peritoneal cavity. Now let's see if we can find this anterior peritoneal reflection. It's situated about here. It can be very difficult to find it. In another patient it's far more easy to see over here. And the image on the right is somewhat difficult but it must be over here. And in this case, there is clear invasion of the peritoneal lining. While in this case, the rectal wall is lying against the peritoneal lining, but there is no invasion of the tumor beyond the rectal wall. So let's go back to our case and continue with the coronal series to study the extension into the anal canal. We need to analyze the external and internal sphincter and the intersphincteric space, which is fatty tissue and bright on the MR images. We start the coronals on the anterior side. So here we have the prostate. And now we see the rectum and the anal canal. On the right side, the tumor invades the levator any and the external sphincter, as we can see here. This means that there is invasion of skeletal muscle, and this makes this tumor a clinical T4B, because T4B means invasion into pelvic organs, bone, but also skeletal muscle, like for instance here the puborectalis and the levator any. On the left side, we can still recognize a free intersphincteric space with high signal. 
There is a normal external anal sphincter and a normal levator ani. The distal third of the external anal sphincter is preserved, as we can see here. Note again the clear invasion of the levator muscle on the right side and the preserved levator plane on the left. Finally, the axial series. Notice that there is a prominent lymph node on the left side. And when we look at the border of the mesorectal fascia, you will notice that this lymph node is outside the mesorectum. And the short axis is about 5 mm. These nodes lateral to the mesorectum are not routinely excised or irradiated. And they are located here. However, as this node does not measure more than 7 mm, it's not clearly pathologic. Because the criteria for these lymph nodes lateral to the mesorectum are different. Only size matters, so they need to be 7 mm or more, like in this case. Where there clearly is a pathological lymph node, just lateral to the mesorectal fascia in the left obturator space. So we need to mention this in the report. Back to our case and let's continue with the actual slides and go to the pelvic floor and the anal sphincter. Notice the bulky nodular extension of the tumor beyond the rectal wall into the mesorectal fat. Moving downwards, the tumor grows within less than one millimeter from the mesorectal fascia from 6 till 12 o'clock. There is extensive invasion of the puborectalis muscle on the right side, while on the left side it is intact and not invaded by a tumor. On the left side the internal and external anal sphincter are intact, while on the right side they are invaded with tumor. And just like we saw in the coronal images, there is a normal appearance of the internal and external sphincter of the distal third of the anal canal below the level of the tumor. Conclusion. This is a high-risk distal rectal tumor with invasion of the pelvic floor and upper two-thirds of the internal and external sphincter. There is extensive involvement of the mesorectal fascia and there are a couple of mesorectal nodes which are very suspicious, even located in the high mesorectum. This tumor is classified as a clinical T4B because of the invasion of the pelvic floor muscles and N1 because of the lymphadenopathy. And this patient will benefit from long-term chemo radiation and will most likely require an abdominal perineal resection which is a combination of a total mesorectal excision with excision of the anal sphincter. For more information go to the radiology assistant just click on this icon and you will get a lot of information. So this is the end of this talk and I wish you all the best. Bye.